Everybody Hates Rand is a Wheel of Time podcast that will contain spoilers for all 14 books. So if you're anti-spoiler, pause this, read all 14 books, and come back. We'll be here. Waiting. Our title is a joke and is meant to be taken as such. In the context of this podcast, everybody refers to us and our cat. You are free to feel however you want about Rand, who is a fictional character. Don't DM us. The world is a mess, dark one stretching out his hand. The dragon's reborn, the fire's been fanned, but everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. Okay, you're just pressing the spoon to your <laughs> eyeballs, which is pretty disturbing <laughs> to watch. Um, <laughs> you have a headache. No, I'm not okay. alleviate it. No, I don't have a headache, but this usually does alleviate headaches if I like have a spoon and I put it over my eye because it's like dark and cold. It doesn't like alleviate it; it just feels nice. Because oh. I've been getting a lot of like ocular headaches, bordering on ocular migraines, where like the pain is concentrated right around your eyes. Yuck. Yeah, they're pretty bad, because all I do is stare at computer screens all day. Yeah. And my body is like, what if you fucked off to the sun? And I'm like, I can't do that. I have to pay my rent. Seriously? <laughs> anyway, I'm a little crazy today, so it should be a fun episode. I'm sad about my tea. Got that. And? But after this, we can watch some volleyball anime. <laughs> I've done everything on my to-do list, except, don't let me forget, after this, we need to look at Patreon, because some people, they're not, even though they're pledged as patrons, they're not getting access to the rewards, so I don't know how. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. One of them is, I think, because Peter's pledged at such a high level, like, we don't have a tier for it, and so I think Patreon is just sort of, like, bugged. So I just wonder how we can fix that. And the other one, someone's trying to upgrade from $3 to $5 to the new reward. But once they do that, it, like, blocks them out of all the rewards. It's really weird. Oh, yeah, I'll look at the settings. Okay. I don't know how Patreon works. All I do is send them a Let's look at where our poll is. Oh, okay. And then we will talk about Nynaeve kicking Mogadian's ass. Because it's very good for me, personally. Posts. Emily's Wheel of Time reread extravaganza. This may shock and surprise you if you're in the Wheel of Time universe or white America. Slavery is not negotiable. <laughs> it's true. Um, so far, everything is at 24%, except the fifth season, which is at 28%. So Unchanged from when I saw it yeah. yesterday when I posted that blog. Predictable. Slavery is not negotiable. No slavery. Yeah. I'm guessing that's the stance in your blog. If it isn't, we're going to have to have a real conversation. Obviously, that's the stance in my fucking blog. <laughs> I'm not Robert Jordan. I'm not a Confederate apologist, probably. Or Brandon Sanderson, who was too weak to to I do a, do coup, to do a yeah. coup d'etat and just write whatever the fuck. A coup did it? I can't. <laughs> I can't. Thank fucking God. This is the second to last episode yeah. of The Shadow Rising. What a slog it's been. So many parent chapters. Many. But Too many. What is this? This is episode 104? This is episode 103. 103. So we'll end with 104, which means we've averaged 26 episodes per mm -hmm. um, book. Which makes me wonder. Well, 25 episodes plus a bonus episode. Yeah. Perhaps. Give and take a little. Yeah. 55, 57... 58 chapters in here so that yeah makes a lot of sense i feel like they get even more chapters in later books though and i refuse to talk for more than 25 episodes about a book that i don't like <laughs> if we get to like a bad book and we've reached 25 episodes and we haven't finished we just have to like cut it off you just there. stop we just stop and go <laughs> on to the next one like if we're in winter sucks or whatever and it's like we'll get to path of daggers or whatever and i'll just structure our reading schedule so we only read the egg parts 
<laughs> I can't drink this. And this drag is... that out over I'm 25 grateful. episodes. <laughs> and the rest we'll just not talk about. Okay, I'm gonna hold it in my hands though because I'm cold. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Our apartment's so cold. It's okay. We're surviving. I would love to only read the egg chapters of the book. I think that would be really astounding. I think it would be fun to read just the one point of view chapters of any book because A, it would be like four chapters generally. <laughs> <laughs> like just think of the naive points of view in this book there have been like two of them there i know and they're all so good which makes me sad yeah so this is this is, uh, ah, this is gonna be so hard to transcribe it's in my head now this is everybody hates rand your friendly neighborhood wheel of time podcast i'm trying to talk more slowly because not because i don't have plenty to say about the shadow rising although i don't <laughs> but because really professional true crime podcast talk slower not that we're a true crime podcast although some of the characterizations in the shadow rising are in fact a true crime but again why am i sitting parallel to the mic i don't know sorry i'm kind of close to the mic it's okay i would love for you to continue being close to the mic and tell me all the beautiful thoughts in your head i don't have any i read these chapters last night and was like okay yeah the i mean there's not, in terms of plot, there's not a lot that happens. The basic plot is they finally go into, oh, that's Emily, I'm Sally, you fucking know, I don't know, whatever, shut up, me. Um, <laughs> um, the basic plot structure of these two chapters is that um, Nynaeve, Elaine, and Egeomen go into the Panarch's palace. They infiltrate. They infiltrate with the help of Bail Domon. Clever disguises. Yeah. Not the first time these la these ladies use disguises. Know, it's extremely funny. More fucking often than any child over the course of their life. Yeah. Doing Halloween. They use disguises more than Devin, friend of the podcast, has worn costumes That's for Halloween. That's saying a lot. He loves yeah. Halloween. I know he He's does. very good at costumes. Thanks for texting me the other day, Devin. It was really nice. And letting me know that you're doing well. Did you know he's a $3 patron right now? I did. I saw that he updated his I'm not good at checking those things, but apparently he was bored at work and YouTube was no longer cutting it. And I was like, thank you. I like to think that we are slightly above yeah, <laughs> YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Just the nebulous term that is youtube yeah he was listening to we don't watch outlander and we were talking about how useless the show is until then when will miranda shows up oh yeah because it was making me very angry anywho with the help of bail Doman and a couple of baskets of ice peppers the three ladies infiltrate the panarch's palace it like reads like a heist you know i know but then robert jordan doesn't have the technical skill to pull off writing about a heist yeah not that I do either, but like you know, writing a heist. I maintain that heists work best in film. That's yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Or real life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Just think of all the heists that have probably gone wrong. I don't know, I can't think of any real world heists off the top of my head, can you? No, you're the crime one. <laughs> I read about crimes like murder, not you know. Well, I read about crimes like genocide, so we're missing some schema. <laughs> We've got to get someone. We got to get a third host of the history of thievery. <laughs> it's okay. I would actually love to have knowledge of the history of thievery, so I will take upon this gauntlet. Okay. Yeah, I just like chuck it out, go on a Wikipedia okay. sprawl, and let me know what you find. Because it's just like there aren't any well known publicized heists, and like maybe that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think it is. But I also just think. Where would we get the inspiration for them if they didn't really happen, you know? I don't know. Just talking about bank robberies? Bank robberies happened. I happen. I know that. Still happen. Bank robbers happen. Bank robbery. Every USA show has a fucking bank I robbery know. episode. Insane. And a plane episode. And a train episode. And an automobile episode. Yeah. And like a snakes episode. Mm hmm Monk gen yeah, Monk does. Psych. Did you know they're making a psych movie? Another one? Oh, that's amazing. Did I you know psych. they're making a fifth season of, wait for it, Sherlock? <laughs> no. <laughs> Supposedly, that's unverified. My coworker told me that, and I was like, wow, I feel really upset right now. I have to go down to the soda fountain in the break room I'm and so just jealous that you guys have a soda drown fountain. myself in Diet Coke. I know it's a very nice thing, but I do have to walk down. A set of stairs, 
asked the receptionist, passed all the HR people every time I wanted to get a Diet Coke, so it's a little bit awkward. You should just start getting two cups. Just double fisting yeah. my little my little paper It'd be like, cups. one's for <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, Ashley, we didn't know you drank so much Diet Coke. Ashley doesn't. She's an adult, so she drinks water. I mean, you could do both. Okay. <laughs> that one's fake. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what were we fucking talking about? Heists. Yeah, and then the ladies split up. Elaine and Egianin go to rescue the Panarch herself. Amathera. Amathera. Oh, I don't even know if we've heard her name yeah, like, until this point. the fuck? Um, and just getting that out of the way because it's stupid and boring. Um, they can... Elaine can... When they go up to the Panarch's room, they can sense somebody... Um, channeling on the other side of the door and Ejianan's like, gotta cut our losses, I guess. Ejianan's like, well, fuck this. Let's yeah. go get my maeve. Yeah. We don't really need this random really ruler this anywhere. Yeah. And all of us reading are like, that's true, we don't. Mm-hmm. Ejianan, you have a healthy sense of plot and character limits. Like, why are they suddenly motivated? Like, I know you don't want to have a ruler under the control of the Black Aja. Yeah. Like, I know that's a bad. Yeah. But also... If this is a stealth mission or something, I don't, it doesn't I, really make, it doesn't really align with what they have been talking about. Like, they're also like, oh, and we're hunting the block Aja, and they literally do nothing to further that goal here. It's very confusing sequence. And then they just leave. Mm-hmm. At the end of this book, they're just, they just fuck they're off. like, bye, this plot is over. <laughs> it's Robert Jordan. Why? What happened? I don't know. What? It makes no sense. They had I to can't, be in the circus for 600 pages. Anyway. I can't be satisfied with this fucking plot when it makes no fucking sense. Like, at least fail getting kidnapped or whatever is a logical thing that happened. Yeah. So, I'm just saying. I just feel really... No, it's very frustrating because, like, they've been talking this entire, like, we know from the beginning that they're searching for something, like, an object that's connected to, like, Rand and the Black Aja, but the entire driving force has been, like, we are trying to stop the Black Aja from doing these nefarious things, and so while getting the object is, like, one little piece of that, it is very frustrating that all of a sudden they're, like, this mission given to us by Lady Pope Swan Sanche, where, I mean... I guess the fuck the establishment or whatever. Yeah. They're just like no more mission from Lady Pope. It's also just frustrating because they have like opportunities to do. Th- I'm so like, I'm sure we've talked about this before, but I'm so over the concept that the good guys can't kill bad mm-hmm. guys. I personally am against capital punishment, but that's government mandated. Yeah, whatever. I just like I'm not gonna stop thinking of my good guys as good guys if they're like. Here's a person who's literally done so many murders. Yeah, like... And I am now rescuing someone from them. And it's like, Elaine, even if you're not supposed to use the one power to kill people, A, you're not a registered Aes Sedai yet. Yeah, it's true. It's the benefits of driving with just a learner's permit. Sorry. And also, Edgianan's right there. Just be like, hey, could you slit this bitch's throat? Yeah, and Edgianan would be like, fuck yeah, I will. Yeah. Lady's evil. Yeah, I even like... I know. Yeah, it's becoming a very frustrating, like, the more and more, especially in this, like, world saturated with superhero narratives. Yeah. Um, like, I know Birds of Prey, spoiler alerts for Birds of Prey for the next minute, I guess, if I finally can make my point in my dumb brain. Like, I know Birds of Prey is technically supposed to be, like, a little bit amoral, Mm -hmm. because you have Harley Quinn, who is quote-unquote un villain. But, like, at the end of that movie, if, like, the disgusting, rapist, face cutty offy guy played by Ewan McGregor didn't blow up, if they were like, we can't kill him, we're the good guys, I would have been like, this movie fucking sucked. Yeah. You know? Like, Devin told me that that villain, like, gets his dumb mask, like, fused to his face mm-hmm. in some sort of terrible yeah. Gotham. Yeah, of course. Accident. Why because does anyone live in Gotham? things always happen in Gotham. What's the deal? Yeah. Anyway, um, he, he was like, so that's what I thought would happen, but then he got blown up, and it was so much better. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm done with villains having fucking comeback narratives. I know. It's so obnoxious that I have to deal with all 11 of these Black Aja ladies for the yeah. next nine books, because... I don't know, man. Robert Jordan can't fucking commit. Yeah, if you can't just, like, 
like, ah, it's just like this weird inherited morality that we've gotten from like the past, like, I maybe like the even the generation previous to us that like, I don't know, that there has to be some sort of like, for some reason, there has to be a line between good and evil. And somehow that line has become murder as opposed to all of the other myriad ways that you can take agency from people and cause them harm. Mm -hmm. Like, this sounds weird. And who am I to be a moral philosopher? But like murder is not the worst thing you can do to a person. Yeah. Yeah. Like these ladies are literally like the, in this instance, they're, she's literally just torturing this woman for fun, like physically, psychologically, mentally, emotionally. They're just, also just literally blowing up the country. Yeah. As Amathera tells us, she's like, they're just making me do whatever yeah. to cause chaos. And it's like that chaos is going to, Affect not just Amathera, this woman who's being personally tortured, yeah. but countless people, particularly those in the lower socioeconomic yeah. classes. Yeah, so it's just, I'm very frustrated. Elaine is very frustrating, and I mean, I always hate Elaine, but Elaine is very frustrating in these chapters because she's like, her like noble morality and perspective like really comes out, like this idea of, um, Just, like, she somehow views everything because she's in the palace, like, through the lens of her privilege. Like, Mm -hmm. she's like, I can't believe that woman is mad at me. I I curtsied the way a servant curtsies, not thinking this is a different culture. (laughs) Like, maybe it's just you just did something wrong. She just, like, is not willing to accept that, like, she isn't right. And she's also, like, at the end makes Amathera go be a serving girl for a couple of days to, like, learn humility or whatever. And it's, like, I don't have a huge objection to that. It's just, like, who are you to dispense moral judgment on this person? Amathera is also a ruler who was put into position by her boyfriend, the king. Yeah. Like, literally because she was fucking the king, she's now the panarch. You can't really impose your views of morality and leadership on a woman who has come to power in such a different, yeah. starkly different way. She yeah. hasn't inherited it. She wasn't necessarily born in privilege. Mm-mm. This is all probably new to her. Yeah. So Elaine is very frustrating in these chapters. I also, back to the killing thing. Yeah. I just think, what's the fucking difference between all of the men mm-hmm. characters killing characters in violence even if it's trolox and murderal because then you're like saying it's okay because they're monsters but you're imposing your view of humanity and monstrosity on beings that you cannot mm-hmm, possibly mm-hmm, know mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so hundo p like just stop being like violence and murder is a is a solely masculine thing that yeah. you can get away with when swords and axes are mm-hmm. involved yeah but if you're a woman using magic power then, ooh, it's scary. Yeah. And bad. And these women aren't sexy and palatable enough anymore. If they're committing murders, yeah. Like, you have to be powerful, but not too powerful. Yeah. You know? You have to be intimidating, but not too intimidating. You know what would be really unsexy? An Aes Sedai that would maybe actually murder a man who's (laughs) doing bad things. That would be really deeply unsexy. That would be such a boner killer. (laughs) You know what would have been <laughs> so here's my like I I know we talk about this all the time, my idealized version of the wheel of time. Take it close your eyes and imagine. Okay. It's gonna in, put the spoon back over my eyes. Okay. It's book seven. Okay. We're in Ebu Dar. Excellent. The Matt Elaine Brigitte Matt quadrangle that is beautiful and perfect. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, Matt has been coerced into moving into the palace as being sexually assaulted by Tylen. Mm-hmm. He tells Elaine. This time, Elaine tells Nynaeve, and Nynaeve immediately goes to the palace and fucking blows Tylen up. <laughs> because she can do that! Yeah! <laughs> and is like, I said I just as bitch. Yeah. You rapist. Yeah. And even if she was like... a perfect book. Literally. Im- immediately. I can forgive many of the other flaws yeah. if that were seen that actually If Nynaeve happened. was like, my friend? <laughs> Nynaeve was like, Blown my up. boy? Yeah. And I mean, even if you guys want to get on your high horse about I said I don't, not killing, whatever, Nynaeve just like, Brigitte, listen to what happened, and Brigitte is like, hold on. <laughs> Nynaeve also hasn't taken the fucking oath. Oh, that's right. Hasn't she at that point? 
No, they don't have the oath wrong. Oh, that's right. That's like a whole plot point. It's Sally. like Edwina elected them to I Sky, yeah. but was like, but we're all getting away with I some know. shit here. We can lie. Oh, I would love it if Night Nave just blew up Tylen. I know. Or yeah, if Birgit just like stuck her full of air. Because Birgit really is the most likely. Yeah, I feel like Birgit has done a lot of murders, and I think that's very sexy of her. Yeah, Birgit, as we've said many times, could step on me. I really wish she would. One day we're going to get a Brigitte casting. Oh, that will don't. probably send me over the edge. I hope it's um the gal who was in Terminator. Oh my god, she's so hot. That very tall woman. Uh, she's with so incredible muscles. Yeah, she's very, very sexy. I can't remember her name, but... I can't either. I just should know it because Devin just texted it to me the other day. You and Devin have some fascinating conversations. Oh, it was related. <laughs> no, I believe it. I'm just, you guys have fascinating conversations. Um, I hear Yeah, you. so they release Amethera and Edw- Edwin. God, I wish Egg was here. Elaine monologues about morality or whatever, and then they um, leave. After, yeah, coercing Amethera to join them. Amethera's like, I'm gonna go get my guards. And Elaine's like, that's not gonna work, but doesn't really explain why. Yeah. Because they've incited a mass riot right outside the palace in order to distract. Which, again, is just like, people will probably die. I know. I'm like, I fully... Urban violence in, you know, the sense of urban being an actual word, meaning related to cities (laughs) and not black people. Yeah. Fuck off, America. I know. Fuck. (laughs) Urban, like, yeah. riots, these things legitimately hurt and kill people. Yeah, they're very scary. And this one seems just, like, completely unnecessary. Yeah, like, what? Like, like I get what? it, you want to distract the guards or whatever, but you guys have, like, really nice disguises. Like, it'll be okay. Especially because, as is pointed out multiple times, when they... The big danger is not from the male soldiers, it's from the members of the Black Audio yeah. who literally have radar for mm-hmm. women who can channel. Yeah. This is like, this could be such an interesting, high stakes, scary sequence mm-hmm. if they were trying to navigate the palace while, you know, not detecting notice from these very particular yeah. women. As it is, it's just kind of lame. Yeah, it's just a kind of like a deus ex Baldemon yeah, who <laughs> just exactly. makes a riot for them. Um, but moving on to the more interesting part of these chapters, <laughs> after they split off, Nynaeve goes to get the, the oh my god, the, the bracelet sad, and the collars. The yeah. bracelets. <laughs> yeah, the emo bracelets. No, I just listened to, I just transcribed the episode where we went through the Wheel of Time companion. Oh yeah. And the, like, entry for this particular thing is, like, the sa- the sad bracelets or something <laughs> like that. Because they weren't given. It's really the Band of Dominion or some bullshit like that. Sad bracelets. Sad bracelets, yeah. Um, you're doing so good on transcripts. I need to catch up with you. It's because I have nothing to do at work. <sighs> yeah. Um, Nynaeve goes to get the sad bracelets, and she's like, I imagine this would be a very hilarious scene where Nynaeve's, like, pretending to dust. Yeah, she's, like, wielding the her museum. feather duster. Yeah, just, like, Mary Poppins in there or whatever, <laughs> like, not even dusting anything. <laughs> um, and she, like, touches the sad bracelets and was like, whoa, there's just, like, suffering radiating out of that. Just sad. Yeah. <laughs> just be sad. Just be sad about it. It's, like, just a crying emoji. Uh, uh. Um, and then she notices another serving girl, but she's like, wait, that bitch doesn't have a feather duster. <laughs> she's not even working. <laughs> yeah. Just like me. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> I love Nynaeve. She's a perfect Ogadian character. I think realizes she's, Nynaeve, like, embraces the sword. Yeah, and, and she tries, she's, like, attacks first, because she's like, that. I have to get the leg up. Bitch. Yeah. And Moga, it just becomes this, like, Nynaeve immediately shoots to still. Yeah, which is, like, fuck! <laughs> just, like, incredible, and would have been iconic if she just managed it. Yeah. Like, the plot here goes to such lengths to get Mogadian out of harm's way. Yeah. To get her to escape as though she'll play an interesting role sometime in the next nine books. Yeah. Spoiler alert, she doesn't. <sighs> Literally any other Forsaken could have ripped Brigitte out. That's the only thing. Yeah. Productive, quote unquote, thing that Mogadian does for the plot. Yeah. Um, so 
And then they're both just sort of going at each other with this weave that will still, while having like a defensive weave in place to hold off the other mm-hmm. woman. So it's kind of like this standoff where they're both straining with all of their capacity. <laughs> yeah. And Mogadine just starts monologuing. And I was like, what the fuck? I know. She's like, I'm not a full idiot, you know? Yeah. Mogadine's like, I'm going to torture you. And, yeah, you know, that stuff you're going after, here's exactly what it is and all its weaknesses. <laughs> Exposition. <laughs> yeah, and we're like, thank you for this convenient like, thank information. You. And then she starts Robert. monologuing about her life in the Age of Legends. <laughs> like, I don't care, her ho. Yeah, like, girl, you yeah. lived in Utopia. And then you literally went on the bad side to destroy the utopia. I don't really get Yeah, I know I don't feel bad for you. I don't, yes. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking She's like, oh my god, everyone's so primitive. And it's like colonizer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and eventually Nine Eight is like, you know, she's trying to distract me and also there's this iconic moment where Nine is like, Oh, she's not just gonna like like, come at me suddenly. She's already come at me yeah. with everything. And I'm holding her off. So We're doing this. We're matched. And so then her brain kind of turns to, how can I, with the same tactic, distract her long enough for me to get the upper hand? And her solution is to just fucking chuck the sad bracelets at Mogadian's face. <laughs> and nail her between the eyes. <laughs> it's so good. Visually, this scene is incredible. I know. Especially because when they're fighting. We've talked about this before, but when they're, like, dueling, it's literally them just, like, standing there staring at each other really hard. Like, I imagine. <laughs> fucking duel of the fates. Yeah. That music play. Yeah. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> ba, ba. Yeah. And it's just, like, keep zooming in on one of them. And there's, like, a little trickle of yeah. sweat and nothing else visible <laughs> happening. I know. I love this idea of this scene being, like, put on film, because it could be so funny, because you could, like, flash between Nine Naves' perspective, where it's, like, really intense, and then, like, another servant walks by, and they're just, like, like, standing there. What the? These women. (laughs) And and all of a sudden, Nine Naves just, like, yeets the sad bracelets (laughs) right at her. It's so funny. Yeet the sad bracelets. Oh, man. Lots of magical items in Wheel of Time just get yeeted. I know. What's the deal? (laughs) You can tell they're all from the two rivers, because they're, like... Got a magic object, just gotta yeet it. Yeah, now we have to chronicle everybody's magical yeeting. <laughs> it's like the hero's journey. It's like a <laughs> Matt gets the horn of Valir. Yeah. Nynaeve gets the sad bracelets. Surely Edwin yeets something. I'm sure. I, I mean, Matt yeets everything. That's like just his reflex. I know. He's just like, throw, then run and catch up. <laughs> yeah. It's like, item, chuck. <laughs> it's my one weapon. Dagger? <laughs> yeet. Yeet. Um, so yeah, Nynaeve wins. Um, it's really cool because you, then you kind of get, like, the first, maybe not the first, but Robert Jordan goes, like, on and on and on at length about how Elaine, Nynaeve, and Egg are just, like, so powerful. And, like, yeah. you get it from some of the other Aes Sedai's perspective, which makes it a little bit more real. But, like, here you have Nynaeve literally facing off against one of the most powerful Aes Sedai in history and winning. So you kind of finally get it drilled into your head that Nynaeve is extremely powerful and scary. <laughs> Especially because, like, she's not particularly trained. She yeah. still can't fucking embrace the source unless she gets angry. Yeah. She had to manufacture anger mm-hmm. before she could do this. And pretty much immediately once it's over, it drops because yeah. she gets freaked out. Yeah. Oh, I did want to say, I like how it sort of upends the trope of the cat fight mm-hmm. of women just, like, kind of crawling around on the floor clawing at each other's faces and that's how that's what a fight between women looks like i just like that it's two women completely dignified standing there in their respective disguises yeah (laughs) their feather my name's probably still holding her feather duster it (laughs) legitimately mentions how she drops it at one point to like feign that she's tired but until that point she's been holding the feather (laughs) duster (laughs) menacingly i imagine Ugh, I love her so much. I wish she'd thrown the feather duster. I think that would have been funnier. <laughs> Just like 
point handle first, right? I'm also super glad she has good aim, because if I tried to throw something at someone across, like, 20 feet, I'd yeah, miss. I would, too. I'm bad. You, like, wouldn't even make it the full 20 <laughs> Yeah, I'd be like, oh, damn. I'm weak and sad. Um, yeah, so she binds um, Mogadian up in a weave to just, like, hold her, and then has this, like, moment of hesitation, like, I need to get her to the tower for trial. Just for... Because, again, there's just no... <laughs> I'm like, Nynaeve, just redo your weave. You can do it. Just yeah. steal her right yeah. now. Seriously. And bang. Bingo. Problem gone. Problem fucking That's solved. another thing. Why can't you just steal these women? Yeah. It's not execution. Well, that's a debate because of the negative repercussions. But it's effectively a permanent disarming move. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's very frustrating. We never see this weave weaponized after this point. Especially because Nynaeve was like, I know this is just what the tower would decide that she needs to be stilled. So it's like, I'm not saying that, you know, in a society you can't just be like, well, the law would say execute him, so I'm just going to go shoot this person in the head. Maybe not the best line of reasoning, but like... But like, it's not like Nynaeve's going to go back to the tower and be like, uh, field report, I did in fact still (laughs) Mogadian. She's probably back... Trying to handle the riots yeah. in fucking Terrabon without any channeling. And it's not like, in my name's mind, Swan Sanche is going to be like, oh, fuck, you did a, such you a did bad. You did so bad. You did so bad. Imagine you're Swan Sanche. Even Aleda is going to be like, well, you're going to prison for knowing Randall Thor. But, <laughs> honestly, a good one for the team. <laughs> Whatever, knowing Randall Thor is prison enough. Aleda yeah. should know <laughs> Yeah, so Nynaeve, like, walks out. She sort of gives up on the idea of capturing Mogadian. Walks out and immediately sees a woman holding a uh, tearing reel that she recognizes, because it was on the list from long ago, stolen items from the tower, uh, as a tearing reel that just produces bale fire. Which, how it's the nuclear bombs of tearing real yeah like what and i named just sees it and immediately hits the fucking deck because yeah. she has great survival instincts yeah and bale fire just starts going crazy knock there's a cool description of like it's knocking through things mm-hmm. in like an arc but as things from up above fall and hit the beam they just disappear too it's just very cool. Yeah, I know. This scene visually would just be so interesting. I know. Because it's just really like, time show. And Mogadi is just sitting there screaming, yeah. like, <laughs> getting missed. Could you imagine if just, like, Balefire hit Mogadi right now? Could have been, like, Robert Jordan, yeah. you could have done so many things if you weren't so obsessed with plot armoring. Yeah. You're villains. You know, how funny would it have been, like, where the name's like, well, I didn't kill her. I did not, in fact, kill her. <laughs> <laughs> but she is technically gone. speaking. Yeah. She probably wouldn't have been dead if I hadn't just left her there. Yeah. But potato, potato. <laughs> Responsibility, schmonsibility. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who cares? Um, carriage of justice. That's what happened. Yeah. Carriage of justice. I think I miss carriage of justice. Oh. But I don't think carriage of justice is the thing. I think I'm just. I love the idea that justice has a carriage, though. Oh yeah, like. Kind of like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Then there's Justice. Just mm-hmm. her chilling in her carriage. Her little, like, stagecoach. Yeah. Some good ponies. Yeah. Excellent. Ponies. Anyway, um, there's just, like, bale fire ripping through the palace for a hot second until the Aes Sedai, the Black Aja lady wielding it, loses control. Because it's, like, an extreme, like, isn't that what happens? Yeah, it's, like, basically, it's, like, you're going to lose control over it, so don't use it. And this bitch is, like, I can handle it. Loses control and then disappears. Yeah. She might be dead. I cannot keep track of any of the Black Naja, so. Yeah, so. <laughs> they're just nameless, faceless yeah. idiots. Villains. Um, so then Nynaeve runs and meets the other two ladies. Reunites. Um, and. Again, there's more running themes of Egeon and Nynaeve being like, oh, but we do care about each other. Yeah. Nynaeve has a line that's like. We are different, but we're still the same because we're humans. And I'm like, when again, when you take the uh, concept that Egyanin is representing the American South and Nynaeve is representing the American North, it's so yeah bad. As both as white people. No, yeah. obviously not saying that in the book they're written as white people, but like in the metaphor, they are both white people living in 
slavery era America. Yeah. <laughs> Being like, morality doesn't matter because I'm white. Morality doesn't, it's fine. Um, although, as we've said, that's a complicated Listen to last episode if you want more about it. Yeah, we have like a little philosophy yeah. conversation. But Elaine's like, Ediana almost went after you because we heard the palace literally getting blown up. <laughs> and Annie's like, that was not me. It was <laughs> Clarification. Re- it was related to me for sure. But <laughs> Elaine's like, we just saw so like this huge burst of power. Yeah. And Annie's like, that one's on me. <laughs> that, I did hit first. Yeah. But I probably would have died if I hadn't. So. To be fair. I also love how casually she's, like, embarrassed about telling them that she captured Mogadian. Because she, she got away. Yeah. She's like, oh, she got away. And there's more of the complex elaine Nynaeve relationship where they're constantly trying to be the more mature one in the relationship who is giving forgiveness or permission to the other person as though either forgiveness or permission requires maturity. Yeah. Um, Elaine demonstrates that it does not, if nothing else. But uh, she's like, don't be mad, Elaine. I know it was dangerous and reckless for going up against one of the forsaken. (laughs) (laughs) And Elaine's like, Jesus, fuck. You did what? It maybe sets in for Elaine fully then that Nynaeve could kick her ass. (laughs) God, what a Gosh, fight that I would know. be. It'd be so iconic. I also just want them to, like, brawl. I feel like Nynaeve would be so scary. Yeah, she would. In just, like, a cage match. Yeah, she'd fucking annihilate you. Yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she'd have, like, a, a thing, like a heavy a thing on the bottom of her braid. Oh, so yeah. she whips her head around. Just That'd be so good. Like, Lan's ring is just braided into yeah. her, the end of her braid, and she just fucking wrecks people Bullets with it. Bullets people. Oh, my God, that'd be amazing. <sighs> WWE casting of Wheel of Time. Um, they then leave the palace, surrounded by Baeldoman's hundreds of soldiers, yeah, so... which he somehow can be like, hey, will you guys go start a riot? And they're all just like, oh, sure, random smuggler captain i know it's so weird uh they leave get back to the inn elaine's like here i'm dispensing the former panarch on you random innkeeper and you get a former panarch and you get a former (laughs) panarch um and then they sort of debrief and it is decided that rather than keep the scary terrain grill with them they'll just have bail de mongo drop it in the ocean yeah meanwhile they're totally fine with having the seal to the dark ones prison with them so i don't really get what the yeah. difference there and he's like we can't risk this falling into the hands of dark friends and i'm like Nynaeve, you're such a control freak i would expect you to be like and the safest place is with me yeah you know yeah so it's a surprising decision for her and one that i really like because at least it takes this like ridiculous plot device away it doesn't know for it a second back i wasn't gonna be completely i know it's just so annoying yeah. though because when you have a character who finally wises up enough to be like yeah. just drop this powerful item in the bottom of the ocean you know that's what we all want characters to do constantly yeah doesn't bore me or be like why don't we just throw it in the ocean yeah <laughs> fucking legend and Oron's like well millions of years from now it'll come up again and Boromir's like, that sounds like a millions of years from now problem. Yeah, it sounds like a problem for future Elrond, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fucking dead. <laughs> I and everyone I know will be super dead. Yeah, so fuck off. Um, So it's like refreshing here to have someone have the rational thought, yeah. but then because it's Wheel of Time and no villain or villainous object stays dead, it is, just becomes annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh... But I think that ends that. Yeah. It's a very inconclusive sort of chapter. Like, they don't end it saying... It's, it's an end of something like, we're go, we'll go to Tarvalon soon or something like that. Yeah, let me see. Soon for Tarvalon. Tarvalon, as it were. Talon. Yeah, they're just like, as soon as the bracelet's gone, we can go back to Tarvalon. Which, again, is sort of conflating their mission to... Like, they seem to have given up on the idea of capturing the Black Aja, even though they were all gung-ho about it. 
one book ago. I still can't believe that's the plot they are given. Here are three teenage girls go capture a bunch of terrorists. Yeah, you can't help feeling that Robert Jordan definitely paid more attention to the plots he gave to his male characters than to those he gave for his female characters because they're so, for the most part, bad. Yeah, they are, at points, truly incomprehensible. Yeah, these ones don't make sense. Uh, Edwin, for this book and the next couple, is just happens to be near a male character which is how she has a plot mm-hmm. it's just bad no one cares about elaine's ascension to the throne i don't care about elaine at all exactly redact her from the story and nothing changes <coughs> maybe the tv show will i still haven't cast her so be so legendary i can hold out hope really time show i would give you all of my love <laughs> and a little bit of my money anything else to say about these chapters i don't think so sorry yeah and any of kicking mogadian's ass is iconic if only it had been a permanent ass kicking robert jordan was a coward i guess where's tibble yeah he's been very quiet is he still under my blankie no (laughs) how hilarious would that be (laughs) (laughs) okay thank you for listening thank you to glenna mckenzie for our theme song Sorry, I sound weird. I was stretching and then yawning. Uh, thanks to everyone who supported us on Patreon. Uh, remember, we've got a new $5 reward up where we will be discussing some literary theories and concepts and kind of that stuff we talk about on the podcast in a little bit more depth. Um, or we might do some like deep dives of classic novels or anything that interests people. Just a little more academic stuff on that. Um, so that's the $5 a month reward. In February, we'll be talking about Joseph Campbell's monomyth, so it should be interesting. Emily's quite the expert, so if you're interested, check that out on our Patreon. I'm not really. I just went to one panel when I was 14. Yeah, and thanks to everyone who's bought stickers, and there we still have tons, so please buy your stickers if you're interested. Support us, support the artists who drew them, support Tibble. It's how we feed him. <laughs> Otherwise, he just... Stickers don't get bought, so Tibble doesn't get fed. Sorry. Ah! No, we feed him we every feed morning. Him. He sits there and screams at me, <laughs> and I scream back. <laughs> so mean. He really is such a little diva in the mornings. And at nights, and, and at all every the time. time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Constantly Maybe it just feels more pronounced in the morning, because my brain's been quiet for eight hours, you know? As soon as I get home from work, he's just yelling. Yeah. No, today I got home earlier than he expected, and he was like, what the fuck? He was, like, mad about it. I was like, I'm fucking sorry. (laughs) How dare you disturb my slumber the way I disturb yours nightly. He's such a little asshole. Do you have a (laughs) sign-off? Today, Emily walked in, and there were these two vases, new vases on our bookshelf. She's like, these are pretty. And I was like, thanks, I got them on the curb. (laughs) And she was like, okay. And then she just walked away to make her pizza. (laughs) What am I supposed to say to that? <laughs> it was just really funny. You fucking demon. <laughs> it was just They're ex- probably dirty, so if we don't know what diseases they're carrying. They don't have diseases. They've been in my car for That's like why six I didn't months. Say it. Oh. If they had diseases. I could all that. <laughs> if they had diseases, I would have a disease already. They are very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> you picked up from the curb despite that. Have a good week. Bye. And don't do a war crime. Don't do it.